Thanks so much for joining us for another episode of Spirit Anointed Leadership. So blessed to have you with us today. And we're in this series right now where we're talking about the learnings that happened as a result of the PhD study I did. And I have to tell you, I'm really, really excited about today's episode because we're going to talk about something today that is really core to my being. Now, again, I was not allowed to have any leading questions. I couldn't ask those folks I interviewed that came from non-denominational churches and Assembly of God churches and they came from Baptist churches and came from West Ham, just all different kinds. I was not allowed to ask them any question that would get a specific answer from them. Not at all. I just had to ask some questions. I had eight questions that I asked them and, and they just gave me the answers they gave me. But one of the things that kept coming up, one of the things that just kept resurfacing was a subject matter that does happen to be really close to my heart. Now I have to tell you, just before I tell you what it is, this is gonna make you wait for just a second, is this is something that was not natural to me. Uh, when I was born and in my first early years, it wasn't something that was natural to me at all. What happened was is that I ended up being around a culture where today's subject really was important. And the subject matter, and as a matter of fact, it became so important that it became the images for this very podcast. And that is spirit anointed leadership. I have to tell you, one of the things that came out very clear in the PhD work and in the interviews I did was the importance of leadership and leadership development, both. The importance of leadership and leadership development. And in those who I interviewed, one of the things that we continually heard from them in those interviews was how important leadership was and how important leadership development was. Now, for them, leaders do three things. And, and what they do through their leadership is three different things. First of all, leaders set the culture. We're going to talk about that for a second. Second of all, leaders equip and empower other people. And finally, Leaders make sure that they are developing other leaders. Those three things are incredibly important. Let's talk, first of all, about the fact that leaders set the culture. Every organization, including churches, have a culture, whether that culture is there by accident or by design. As a matter of fact, one of the things that I think that we often forget is the importance that we as spirit-anointed leaders have in setting the culture of the place that we're in. What we say, what we don't say, what we do and what we don't do, what we allow and what we don't allow. Spirit anointed leaders take responsibility for the cultures that they have and that are around them. So for instance, one of the things that's true in the organization that I'm blessed to serve is that we have cultural distinctives, things that are important to us and we talk about them. As a matter of fact, we just got done rating ourselves at how well we think we are doing of living out our staff culture. That's really important to us. And I did, when I did these interviews, I got this great story. By the way, I'm going to tell you the story, but don't get mad at me because I didn't do it, but it's a great story. This pastor, it was his first Sunday as being the senior pastor of his church. Now, what's interesting is, is that their church was a former Assembly of God church, and they were moving into a brand new building that Sunday. So first Sunday of him being the senior pastor, first Sunday of them moving into this building. And he said, I'm sitting in the back or standing in the back, back by the booth. And he said, we're in the first praise and worship song on the first Sunday when I'm going to be the senior pastor. And he said, uh, all of a sudden what happened was, is I could tell a woman in about the third row started. He said, I heard the noise and I could tell it was a tambourine. So I said, I walked right up to her from the back. I walked right up and she was standing and playing her tambourine. And I looked right at her and I said to her in love, no, not here. And she kind of sheepishly put her tambourine down and said, okay, now, don't get mad at me. I didn't do that. But the point is, is that leaders set cultures. What was he doing that day? He was saying, we're not going to be a tambourine church. Now, I don't care if you're a tambourine church or not. What I do care about is that we take responsibility. And what these pastors who are growing, whose churches were going through conversion, baptism, discipleship rates going into COVID and coming out of COVID, what the PhD study showed is that they cared about a culture. They cared that as a leader, they needed to set the culture. Now, the, the culture could have been different things, certainly as we've already talked about in the the first of the series of, 
of PhD learnings that we did, we talked about the fact that lost people deeply matter to God. And so that was woven into the culture of their church. Second thing we talked about is the strategicness of preaching. That they didn't take their preaching haphazardly. No, they were very, very committed to writing messages and preaching messages that just didn't communicate but connected with their audience. Third thing we talked about is the importance that they gave to the working of Holy Spirit in their midst. Allowing Holy Spirit to move in their midst was incredibly important to them. And then this fourth thing that they talked about when we talked about the culture of their church was leadership and leadership development. These these folks, and it didn't matter what size church that they were in, because the people who made into our study were small churches in smaller communities and large churches in larger communities and everything in between, quite frankly. The only thing they had in common is that they were growing through conversion, baptism, and discipleship rates going into COVID and coming out of COVID. It's the only thing they had in common. They didn't share denominational heritage. They didn't share the same kind of community. They didn't share the same kind of diversity. Not at all. But those they had in common. And leadership was important to them. And the first thing they talked about when they talked about leadership was studying the culture. The second thing they talked about was the importance that they have as leaders to set the tone for equipping people to do the work of the ministry. Right back to Ephesians chapter 4, some of them talked about fivefold ministry. Some of them definitely talked about that and the importance of that. Others did not. But what they all talked about was the fact that they wanted to give ministry away, that they were not interested at all in doing all the work of the ministry. That they really wanted to empower the people around them to do the work that Holy Spirit had called them to do. And the third thing, when they talked about leadership and the importance of leadership in their culture, was to talk about the importance of leadership development, of developing other leaders around them. And one of the people I interviewed for the study is a guy by the name of Michael Fletcher. Michael was the former senior pastor of a church called Manna, and he wrote a book called Empowering Leadership. And I had the privilege of interviewing him. I actually didn't even realize, I guess I live in a cave, I didn't even realize that this guy I was interviewing had written a book on it until I was in the process of interviewing him. But he pastored this church called Manna. Actually, his son is now the senior pastor of that church. One of the interesting things about Manna Church is that they happen to be right next door to the largest military base in the country. And so their church, again, was growing long before COVID and was growing coming out of COVID. One of the things he said is, is that we have at least a third of, uh, about a third of our congregation that filters out every year because they get reassigned. So many of our people end up being people from the military base. And so they become part of man. Many, many times we are winning them to Jesus and then we have to develop them as leaders. And then two years later, they're gone. As a matter of fact, what's interesting is, is that Michael Fletcher says that their church, Manna, only does two things well. He said, we actually only do two things well. Number one is outreach. We really pour a lot of money and a lot of time and a lot of effort into outreach. And then number two, leadership development. He said, you could come to Manna and find a lot of things that we don't do all that well. But those two things we give a lot of effort and energy to. He said, and we have to because if if we're not continually developing leaders all the time, then what ends up happening is, is that we don't have any leaders around here. Because when you're bringing so many people to faith and then they end up leaving, you've got to have this constant commitment to developing leaders. And so that's what they do. Actually, as I did my PhD study, one of the things I learned about was someone would say, you know what, I, I take 12 individuals a year. I kind of do the Jesus model. And I disciple those 12. And sometimes they're dentists and sometimes they're mechanics and sometimes, you know, they, they're, um, they stay at home. They're stay, stay at home mom or stay at home dad. But I pick 12 people every year that I just pour myself into and then I ask them to turn around after that year and do the exact same thing. That particular individual talked about the fact that not only was he pouring into them for the area of leadership, but he was also pouring them in the area of communication. And some of those people actually were preaching the messages on the, in their weekend services. And again, this church was growing, quite frankly, uh, quite fanatically. It was really growing very fast. And what's interesting is, is that 
the, this individual person said to me, you know what? I'm not the best communicator when it comes to actually presenting the gospel. Man, people coming to Christ is a really high value to me. But I'm not the best communicator in our church. There are other lay people that are actually better communicators than I am. So when I sense that we really need to share the gospel, which is a, a fairly regular routine for them, so I actually turn the reins over to someone else in my congregation and I empower them to preach the word that weekend and they share the gospel and people come to Christ. He said, and nothing is more thrilling for me than to actually be sitting in the back or sitting somewhere in the congregation and watching someone else present the gospel in a compelling way and watching people come to Christ through that. It's so much fun for me as a leader because I get to just set them up and watch them hit the ball and watch Holy Spirit work through them and amazing things happen. So I couldn't be any more pleased. It's so much more fun than just me always presenting the gospel because I don't do it as well as them. So here's a question for us. When it comes to the boards that we're blessed to serve with, maybe we have a church board or maybe we have a, a group of volunteers that serve with us in youth ministry or children's ministry. And I forget, I, I had a dear friend who's still a friend of mine and they were in charge of the children's ministry of their church and they took discipleship and leadership development very seriously and they made sure that they discipled and developed the volunteer children's workers that were serving in their ministry week in and week out. They wanted to make sure that they were pouring into them even as those volunteers were pouring in to the children of that church. And here's my question for you. What are your thoughts along the lines of leadership development? Are you leading in such a way that you're developing the people around you? Spirit anointed leaders, I think, take responsibility to look around them, to see the people that God has placed around them, and then say, I want to do everything I can to help develop them as leaders so they can become all that God created them to be. God has entrusted you with people around you. As a spirit anointed leader, you have people around you that he's placed there for a reason. And they're not there just to perform a duty. They're not there just to do ministry. They're there because God wants to develop them through you. He's given you gifts and given you incredible things that you can pass on to them. Please, please, please don't allow the enemy to tell you that you have nothing to offer because that's a lie. The people around you, they need to grow with you. So maybe you'll just do what a friend of mine by the name of Dan Ryland says. You grab a book, read a chapter, just ask yourself the questions. What did you learn? And how are you, imply, how are you imp, applying it to your life? It doesn't have to be complicated. You don't have to come up with all these lessons. Just go through a book together. But whatever it is, as spirit anointed leaders, let's learn from those whose churches were growing, going into COVID, coming out of COVID, about the importance of leaders as they set the culture for their church. Number two, as they equip, empower other people to do the work of the ministry. Exactly what Ephesians 4.11 says. And then number three, as we develop the leaders around us that God has entrusted to us so that they can become all that God created them to be. Hey, thanks for your time today. My prayer is for all of us is that we'll take today's time and we'll actually sit down and we'll ask Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, would you guide me? Who is it that you want me to invest my life in? How is it that you want to develop the leaders around me in such a way that they can run into all that you have for them. Chances are, you're really thankful for some people that built into your life. Some people that took a risk on you. Some people that intentionally developed you. And now, the Holy Spirit's invitation is for us to turn around and do the exact same thing for the people around us. Hey, I love you a lot. Thanks again for joining us. Do me a favor, subscribe to this podcast if it's helpful for you. Give us ideas. Send in your suggestions for us. Those are really, really helpful for us. Share this podcast with anyone you think might benefit from it. And then follow us. That would be a huge, huge blessing. Here's what I pray. I pray that as spirit-anointed leaders, we would set cultures. We would equip and empower the people around us. 
and we would take seriously this invitation from Holy Spirit to develop the leaders that He's entrusted to our care. Have an awesome day. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time.